Brainitos presents 14 Lies Everyone Tells on a Regular Basis. Let's be honest, we all bend the truth now and then. Sometimes it's an elaborate ruse that requires some finesse. You know, like when you call in sick to work, complete with a convincing fake cough and strategically timed sniffles. But more often than not, we rely on harmless white lies to navigate everyday interactions. These small fibs help us avoid uncomfortable situations and spare feelings. Here are some of the most common lies we tell on the regular. Number one, I'm good, how are you? This is probably the most universal lie of all. It's practically a reflex at this point. When someone asks how we are, it's almost as if our mouths move on their own, automatically responding with, I'm good, how are you? We could be feeling ecstatic or downright miserable. The default answer remains the same, and the person asking will typically mirror this response, claiming they are good as well. It's a social lubricant that keeps interactions smooth and prevents the awkwardness of unloading our emotional baggage on someone who might just be making small talk. Number two, that's interesting. We've all been there, stuck in a conversation that's about as exciting as watching paint dry. To avoid being rude, we muster up an enthusiastic, that's interesting, even when it's not. It's a phrase that works in almost any situation, whether someone is describing their stamp collection or recounting a tedious workday. This little lie helps maintain social niceties. It's a conversational placeholder that signals we're paying attention, though our minds might be elsewhere. Number three, I'm fine. Another classic, when someone senses that something is off and probes a bit deeper, often our immediate reaction is to say, I'm fine. We use it as a shield to deflect further questioning and to avoid appearing vulnerable. It doesn't matter if we're dealing with stress, personal issues, or just having an off day. I'm fine is the go-to response that helps us get through the day without having to confront our problems head on in every interaction. It's like the verbal equivalent of putting on a brave face. Number four, my phone's been acting weird. This excuse is a lifesaver when we've been ignoring someone's messages or calls. Blaming our unreliable phones is an easy out for avoiding those we'd rather not engage with. Be it social fatigue or simply not wanting to engage in certain conversations, this fib provides a plausible, technologically driven reason for our silence. It shifts the blame to an inanimate object, sparing us from having to admit we just didn't want to talk. Plus, in an age where tech issues are common, it's an excuse that's often readily accepted. Number five, I didn't even see you there. We've all been guilty of dodging someone in public. When confronted later, responding with, I didn't even see you there, is the perfect cover-up. The slide preserves your reputation and the other person's feelings, sparing them the sting of being deliberately ignored. It's a harmless way to navigate awkward encounters and it's particularly useful in small communities or workplaces where running into acquaintances is inevitable. Number six, just kidding. Yep, the ultimate backpedal. When a joke falls flat or a comment is too harsh, adding just kidding at the end can soften the blow. This phrase acts as a quick escape hatch, allowing us to retract our words and sidestep the awkwardness or potential offense caused. Essentially, it's a verbal undo button that lets us test the waters of humor or honesty. It helps us navigate social boundaries and gauge reactions while minimizing risk. Number seven, this will only take a minute. This is a lie we tell to make things seem less of a hassle. Rarely does anything actually take just a minute, but downplaying the time commitment makes it easier to get others or ourselves on board. This fib is especially useful in work settings or household chores, where the perception of time can influence willingness to participate. It's a mental trick to motivate action or cooperation without overwhelming anyone. Number eight, I've got plans that day. Ah, the go-to excuse for declining invitations we don't wanna accept. I've got plans that day provides a polite way out, saving us from having to explain why we're declining. Regardless if we genuinely have plans or just want to stay home, the sly helps maintain our social calendar on our terms. It's a versatile fib that covers everything from avoiding a dreaded gathering to skipping out on an inconvenient meeting. Using this excuse, we can prioritize our own wants and needs and prevent any offense or feelings of guilt. Number nine, it wasn't that expensive. 
Sometimes when we buy something a bit pricier than we'd like to admit, we downplay the cost. It wasn't that expensive is a lie we tell to avoid judgment or to make ourselves feel better about the splurge. It's a way to justify spending habits and keep others from raising their eyebrows at our financial decisions. This lie is rather handy when discussing purchases with friends, family, or a partner who might have differing views on financial priorities. Number 10. That makes sense. When someone explains something and we don't quite get it, we nod along and say, that makes sense. It's a way to appear engaged and understanding while concealing our confusion. The sly helps keep the conversation flowing smoothly and spares the other person from feeling like they need to re-explain. It's a useful tool in both personal and professional settings where admitting confusion might feel embarrassing or burdensome. By pretending to understand, we can maintain the flow of dialogue and revisit the topic later if needed. Number 11. I'm almost done. This is a reassuring lie we tell others, and sometimes ourselves. Saying I'm almost done manages expectations and buys us a little time to finish what we're doing. This fib basically keeps others from feeling impatient and helps us stay focused on the task at hand. It's kind of a motivational strategy that helps us push through to the finish line regardless of how far we still have to go. Number 12. It's not you, it's me. While it might be a cliche, this is a lie that many of us have used to end a relationship without making the other person feel at fault. By saying it's not you, it's me, we assume responsibility for the relationship's end, suggesting that the issues lie within ourselves rather than with our partner. This approach can help maintain a sense of dignity and respect for both parties. It helps avoid direct blame and minimize potential hurt feelings. Number 13. I gotta run. This is the perfect exit strategy for when we want to leave a conversation or situation quickly. I gotta run is vague enough to cover any number of reasons for leaving, and it's generally accepted without question. This fib allows us to bow out gracefully, avoiding the need to delve into specifics. It's a respectful way to prioritize our time and energy ensuring we don't offend others or get stuck in unwanted interactions. Number 14. Let's hang out soon. A friendly parting remark, often said without any real intent. Let's hang out soon is a social gesture that maintains goodwill, keeping the door open for future interactions that likely won't happen. The sly is often used among acquaintances or in casual friendships where the intention to meet up is more about politeness than actual planning. It helps us end interactions on a high note without committing to specific plans we might not follow through on. So, which one of these little white lies are you telling the most? And if you think you're not telling them, guess what? You're lying again. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell. That way you'll get notified of our next post. Also, to learn more about many other interesting topics, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.